Dan Patrick Show brought to you by City Double Cash Card. Every purchase gets a little sweeter because it's the card that lets you earn 1% cash back. When you buy 1% as you pay, two ways to earn cash back makes a lot of the other cards seem one-sided. David Deal, he's an analyst on Fox, got a couple of Super Bowl rings with the New York Giants, joins us here in studio. You're looking good. You're ready to go here. You were just uh, doing a demonstration with Paulie as Paulie was uh, playing the role of you and you were Tiki Barber there. Yeah, we were uh, talking about pulling guards and how do you set up blocks for, for running backs. And I just said the, one of the greatest things that Tiki Barber ever did for me was early on my rookie year, I was playing right guard. So one of the things he would bull, do when you were pulling guard leading for him, he would put his hand either on the left side or the right side of your lower back. So you knew where he was taking the football. So you knew where to target on a linebacker and he would set it up perfectly. If he had his hand on his in, in the inside of you, on that right side of your lower back, he'd, he'd see the linebacker flow over the top because it'd make it look like he was going to take it outside, and then he'd cut right inside off your block, and it'd, it'd set up perfectly. Did uh, the lineman ever make fun of Eli with the faces that Eli would make on the field? No. You know, that's the thing. Oh, <laughs> come on. I, believe me, you know, we have a lot of fun, and we have a lot of talking, but when he's usually making those faces, it's not a good thing, and it – when when he, he has the, oh, the the moments that he has the Eli face that you see on Twitter and yeah. Instagram, those are moments that you do not want to have happen during football okay, games but because either practice? you're losing or he's getting hit, and uh, somehow the <laughs> offensive line is going to get blamed for it. But in practice or behind his back, other linemen didn't make fun I, of you. Know what? We were just so used to it. I don't know. I mean, th- that's the thing that you know we've always talked about this with. Eli's is so even keel. When things are good, things are bad. He's the same guy. But it, some of the faces that they've caught on TV with the hair up and the, the exhaust, I mean, some of those you just can't deny are hilarious. Okay, better faces, Eli or Tom Coughlin? Uh, I, Tom Coughlin. I mean, the red face, yeah. the hands, the <laughs> gestures. I mean, that is entertaining television right there. Who uh, yelled at you more, Eli or Coughlin? Coughlin, Coach Coughlin, most definitely. That's the thing with Coach Coughlin, good, bad, and different. You knew where you stood with him, and he let it known. He he t- would tell you right to your face, and he would do it to make example out of people in groups because when, when you're playing in a game of football, you could have 10 guys do their job, and if one guy doesn't, it can make or break a, a play or a touchdown, or it could actually get somebody hurt. So when you're out there, it's all about accountability, and that was the biggest thing that Coach Coughlin, pro- you know, told everybody and he would stress that there's nobody bigger than the team. The New York Giants logo on your helmet and on that jersey is far more important than the name on your back of your jersey. And, and that's something that from day one he preached and that people buy into and believe in because that's the Giants way. Do you have to – are you born with the team philosophy as a lineman? Because you're not going to get any attention. Whenever they call your name or number, you probably held on the play but you, you have to be totally selfless to be an offensive line. Can, can you be a selfish offensive lineman? No, absolutely not. You have to be selfless to play offensive line. I mean, it, the, the whole continuity of a group is everything. And I, I heard you guys talking about it before uh, in regards to who would you pick in free agency. The offensive line makes or breaks a football team. They set the tempo for practices. They set the demeanor and, and the pride and what it takes going into football games. And when we were rolling, when we had things going well as an offensive line, everybody in that locker room could look at us and knew that we were going to go out and go to battle each and every time, and it lifted the football team. So there's no denying what it takes to be an offensive lineman in the league. Uh, Take, for example, any of us. We'll move to any position. We'll move amongst the offensive line to play anything because we know that's what the team needs in order to to provide wins and, and in order to succeed. I think that's any offensive lineman's attitude and mentality going into things because, yeah, you don't have the glory. Yeah, your name's not in the paper, but if you get it back for over 100 yards or 1,000 yards on the season, your quarterback's upright, he's throwing the ball well, there, there's no doubt that it's because of the work and the time that you put in. That's, that's the mushroom society that you always hear about. You guys are in the dark, watching film, underappreciated, <laughs> overworked. That's an offensive lineman. Uh, who bought better gifts? A running back for the line or the quarterback for the line? The quarterback. Uh, Eli was always great to the offensive line. We would always have group dinners that we would do every other week. The offensive line, you know, Eli would come. The quarterbacks, sometimes the running backs would come. uh, But Eli was the greatest. He took care of us. And I'm not saying anything about the running backs. The running backs were always great. But Eli always took care of his offensive line. Biggest tab you ever saw for dinner? Biggest tab. Uh... 
offensive line dinner after Super Bowl 2007. I think, I mean, that was a $9,000, $10,000 bill. I mean, you had all the offensive linemen. Our coaches were there. The quarterbacks, running backs came. I mean, it was it was awesome. We had a we had a feast at Del Frisco, to say the least. Oh, nice. He's David Deal from uh, Fox. Got a couple of you don't have your Super Bowl rings. I know you said it the last time. I know. I, I, Why? I, it's not an everyday thing for me. I don't... Well, I know, but this isn't every day that you're on <laughs> this show. I thought you'd bring in some hardware here. Let okay. the kids see it. You know, okay. Seaton could put it around his wrist. Well, see, I'm setting you up. This means I have to come back to bring my okay. rings. Okay, well. right, fair enough. Would you pay Indomitian and Sue a hundred million dollars? Yeah, there's no denying what he brings to a football team and to a defensive line. Toughness, he brings a, a defensive lineman that no matter what, you have to find him on the defensive line. You, he's disruptive against the run in the pass, but when you're paying somebody interior defensive lineman that much money and they're not producing on the outside, whether it's sacks or pressures or that types of things, it, it's tough to put over $100 million into one piece, especially if you're talking about the Miami Dolphins. For $100 million, they could get four players for that one player that can make them a better football team overall compared to just one player. And I'm not saying that he's not going to provide spark for Wake on the outside and Vernon on the other side because that's a great front four. But when you have as many holes as they have on that football team, there's so many other needs that you need to put into that instead of just one player at one part and, and it, as, as a three technique. So the answer is no. I would. Okay. No. There, okay. Did you ever block Sue? Uh, no. I was uh, at tackle uh, the times that we played him, and he was at guard, uh, playing three technique against the guards. So you didn't take a I've shot I've worked at double him? teams and oh, stuff okay. like that, but no one-on-ones or anything. Toughest guy to block. Yeah, I, I said the, the, a while back, I, I wish you guys looked him up. I said, for me, one of the toughest guys was Leroy Glover. But, yeah. you know, when, when you look at it, when De, – De, Oh, he see. wore the belt, right? Yeah, he wore uh, the leather belt, but – I mean, when, when you just think about all the different players that I've had to go up against, I mean, DeMarcus Ware's twice a year. Uh, Trent Cole, who just got released, was a very underrated defensive end uh, for uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, Andre Carter played all those years in Washington. Uh, Julius Peppers. I mean, when you're playing left tackle, yeah. you're playing up <laughs> against the elite guys. And, and the year that I went to the Pro Bowl in 2010, I had a stretch where out of 16 games, I think 11 of them were first-rounders and top – top echelon pass rushers that you face that you face. So uh, when you're at left tackle, you're facing the best of the best and, and you've got to bring your game each and every week. When, when you look at free agency and, and we're trying to assess, you know, Andre Johnson wants to now go to a winning team. Uh, you got guys, Julius Thomas just went to Jacksonville to get paid. Allegedly. We don't know. Free agency hasn't oh, opened that's yet. True. <laughs> that, that's true. And Frank Gore may end up going to the Colts there, but the, the mindset of these players, um, Going to these teams, you know, Julius Thomas could have, I guess, maybe stayed in Denver. Mm -hmm. You know you're going to play with Peyton Manning, but you're going to go to Jacksonville to get paid. Is it about the money? Is it always about the money? I think it depends on what position you're at in your career. I mean, if you're talking about a, a guy like Frank Gore, it's about the money for him. He's a running back. He's on the, the end of spiral of his career. I still think he's a valuable player, and I think he deserves to be paid. Not only how he runs the ball – but what he's able to do in pass protection, his blitz pickup. I mean, linebackers come through, and he stands them up. So I think Frank Gore deserves to get paid. And for him right now in his career, it's everything for him to get paid because his window of playing is so much smaller now. But when you're talking about a guy like Julius Thomas, where he's, what is he, 25 years old, 24 years old, or a, a DeMarco Murray where they're 26, they've got a long, bright future ahead of them in the NFL. And it's for them at their time right now to take that money because you don't know what this game's going to do to you down the road. I mean, this is a business. Let's face it. And there comes to a point, yeah, loyalty plays into it. But when it comes to numbers and the salary cap, that salary cap's way more important than the loyalty at times. So for guys like that, it's so important for them to go get their money now because if they don't and they get hurt, they're going to be right back wishing that they went and reached the money instead of going for the loyalty. I mean, Look at Victor Cruz two years ago. Yeah. If he didn't sign that contract yeah. and if he didn't do handle himself the way that he did and hold out a little bit and say that he wanted his contract, he'd be sitting here right now with back-to-back -back injuries and surgeries on two seasons to his knees, and he wouldn't have that money that he would have had two years ago. How much did you weigh when you were born? When I was born, yeah. I was uh, 9 pounds, 10 ounces, two weeks early. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
I, I, I'll never forget this story. My mom telling me that about two weeks in, she was already feeding me moist Cheerios because the baby food and her weren't enough. <laughs> Were you having steak about a month into? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I was having shish kebab steaks. <laughs> Meat, meatloaf salads, yeah. as we used to joke around with. I like that. Yeah. Uh, can you stick around? Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, we'll continue with David Deal. We'll get to your phone calls coming up. Christian Leitner joins us in studio coming up next hour. This is the Dan Patrick Show.